Hi there, Ms. Lambs here. In this video, we would like to cover the evaluation section in the um, biology IA. Now, uh, in this part, with, although we say evaluation, this is actually we refer to the evaluation criteria in the biology IA. And within that criteria, we include the conclusion. So let's get started. Uh, this is just a reminder, so actually the conclusion is scored in this criteria called evaluation. Uh, before we continue, I just want to clarify about the differences between Biology IA and Biology EE regarding to these sections. Now, in Biology IA, generally speaking, the layout is conclusion first before it comes to the evaluation. Whereas in the biology EE, you will do your evaluation first before your conclusion. Now, there's a reason for that because um, here uh, for the biology IA, you are explained why why you need to have the conclusion before the evaluation is because um, you want to explain what your finding in your experiment is, and then uh, later on you will assess or uh, what can you do better in your uh, experiment. So that's why we have conclusion before evaluations, okay, for the biology IA. But let's say if you're doing the biology E as well, uh, how come you need to do the evaluation first before you do the conclusion? Now, the reason be is because the evaluation is important. Um, in biology E, not only you need to conduct the experiment, you need to um, write up a 4,000 words to an uh, essay about um, all the sources that you use, how you integrate those resources and things like that. So for biology, it's very important in terms of your writing skills as well. You need to justify, okay, or you need to analyze your source of data. So that is where the critical thing can comes in. So and it takes up quite a large part of your biology EE throughout. And then in the end, usually for biology EE, in the end, the conclusion will be very short statement because it's actually concluding your whole passage, okay? So your whole biology EE. So therefore, conclusion is usually uh, right at the end. So I hope this helps to clarify or uh, the order of conclusion and evaluation in biology IA and biology EE. Okay, so uh, back to biology IA now, just biology IA for now. Um, so let's look at what the examiner report says about conclusion. Actually, for this session, uh, there's another paragraph about the evaluation, but I just want to focus on the conclusion part here. So uh, the examiner are looking for the um, the data that support the conclusion. So as you can see here, and then the conclusions must refer back to the research question. Now, this is very important, and a lot of students overlook this part. Um, the reason is because um, the, re the purpose of doing this experiment is to set out to answer your research question. So, you, for example, in your essay, or it, like for example, in your biology IA, okay, you mentioned about your research question, so then you do your experiment. But then if you're not referring back to the research question, then you haven't answered your research question, okay? So it defeats the purposes, okay? So make sure you refer back to your research question. Did your experimental data support your research question? Okay, answer back your research questions. And then, of course, you need some biological explanations as to what happened in the experiment. Okay, so here part one conclusion. Okay, some of the key checklists. Okay, of course, there's more details as well, but uh, this is just an overall um, brief checklist. Okay, so one of them is, of course, you need to state the trend. Okay, so the result of the experiment. I just will highlight this part about the qualitative part. Okay, so a lot of students they can describe what happens numerically or overall trend, but they often forgot to mention about the qualitative observation. Now, in the previous part, when we talk about analysis, we will talk about um, how we uh, write down our a good qualitative observation is to provide some light as to uh, the trend or things like that. For example, did your result becomes more, as the concentration increased, did the color becomes more dark or more pale, things like that. So which will shred, shred some light onto the uh, experimental result, okay? So um, you need to refer to the qualitative data and that goes back to the previous part about how well you describe your observations. And uh, any anomalous data, okay, if there's any out of trend data, then you need to explain what are the possible reasons. Perhaps during that repeat trial, something happened, okay, maybe the temperature, room temperature suddenly gone up and things like that. So reaction rate is faster, things like that. You need to explain, okay. And then uh, here, next part is uh, now you need to do some partly related to the analysis part. Okay, so uh, from previously, uh, you've mentioned about the R value. Okay, so you need to refer the R value. You need to state uh, based on the R value, the Corel functions, okay? Um, 
how strong or how weak the trend is. Okay, positive trend or negative trend. And then a uh, trend line equation may come handy if you are trying to um, to find out the, for example, the optimum temperature or things like that. So maybe perhaps you should you could use the trend line or the minimum um, concentration that is effective against uh, microbes or things like that. So perhaps you could use the uh, trend line equations, okay, to make an estimate, okay. So extrapolate your data and then make an estimate, okay, things like that. So uh, and the next one is a, a t test, okay. So t test is to check if there's a significant difference, okay. It will be very useful if you're using your if your IV is discontinuous, okay. So then you want to see if there's a significant difference between two sets of data. So you need to refer to that. Okay, so because previously in the analysis part, you have talked about the t-test, so the result of your t-test. And then in the conclusion part, you need to use the result of your t-test to apply onto your experiment. Okay, so that's why you need to refer to your t-test as well. So at this stage, a lot of students will say, oh, Miss Lance, it seems like there's a lot of overlap. It might seem a lot of overlap, and actually they do have some overlap, but the focus is a bit different. Okay, so and then the next one remind that this is very very important uh, to refer back to your re, uh, research question and hypothesis. Okay, make sure you refer to them because like I said before, uh, your the purpose of your experiment is to set out to answer your research question, and so after you have done your experiment, of course you need to answer back your questions. Okay, so make sure you refer back to your uh, research questions and answer your hypothesis and then uh, to answer those okay you need to have the biological theory okay and uh, it will be very good that if you can provide a few external studies that support your experiment okay so uh, this is just a uh, taken from the IB syllabus, okay, as to what the examiner is looking at, the score band, things like that. You will notice, okay, I highlight a few things, not all of them because I'm um, leaving the evaluation part of the evaluation section um, in the next video. But look at this one. So related to the conclusion part is you need to refer to the research question at each score band. They already mentioned that you need to refer to the research question. So that means the re research question is very important. And uh, you need to... Um, make some comparison with acceptable, um, accepted uh, scientific context. So basically means that you need to have the biological theories, okay, to explain it. Okay, but uh, because it says comparison, so it will be good to also include some of the external uh, studies or journals that you have researched to support it. Okay, so these are the two key parts uh, mentioned in the uh, score band. But uh, if you want to see, oh, so what is the difference between the score band, like five, six, and three, four, and one, two? Okay, you can see that this one, uh, one, two band, okay, they were saying it's very superficial. And the next one is describe and make, so they describe some of them, uh, the theory, okay, the experiment, and things like that. And then here, describe and justify. Now, this justify part is quite challenging part. So, for example, uh, let's say, uh, how well is that external study applied to the, your experiment, things like that. So you need to justify it, okay? And yeah. Okay, so this uh, actually from taken from the Green IA booklet guidance, okay, uh, as to what you need to check out for for the conclusion part in the e evaluation sections, okay? Conclusion part, basically. Uh, I just highlight a few things uh, people miss out. So one of them is uh, comparing with other people's data theory, okay, uh, in your conclusions, okay. And then another possible one that uh, a lot of students overlook is the referring to the uh, qualitative data, that means your observation, okay. Um, and the next one is, um, again, this is a very important one and a lot of students miss out is that uh, you need to refer back to your RQ research question and hypothesis, okay. So yeah, there you go. Right, so that is the first part, very, very short, okay, about the conclusion part. I hope this video helps you and guides you along the way. So, at oil and good luck. Bye-bye.